Boom, boom, boom. Morning. All right, guys. So um, welcome to the review week one, because we actually did this whole curriculum already once and we're going back around again. So this is week one of the <clears throat> brand new personal branding, I guess, intensive. Uh, so Patricia, while I find the document, um, what brings you here? to to hear about this and what, what would you need personal branding for what would be your business uh the business is trading as in foreign exchange so i'm switching out switching out from interior design to being more efficient in trading as in foreign exchange currency and with that um how how long have you been doing it or attempt you know Building up a um, the training, I'd say about six months. Six months, okay. Yeah. Um, so you're strictly forex. Are you dealing with crypto or any of that stuff? Oh yes, crypto as well. Correct. Got it. Um, yeah, it's, that's a definitely an, an interesting world to be in. Um, you know, I, I spent I spent way too much time messing with crypto this week. That's for sure. Um. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I get that. So Mario, what about you? What do you, hopefully you, you can tap into this. Um, what are you looking for, for personal branding? Uh, I guess Mario cannot talk right now. That's okay. We'll go with- Patrick. All right, you there? Oh, go ahead, yeah, I got you. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I'm actually a real estate agent and I also do credit repair on the side to help uh, with anybody that can't get their credit done for, um, for real estate for purchasing houses got it so, and i'm fairly new at both of them i mean i've been in real estate for about a year and a half and of course a couple months after i got my license the whole virus thing hit so it's been a struggle well at least you got to study <laughs> yeah <laughs> gotta get better i mean you know the test isn't that hard did you pass like how many times did it take you to pass first time oh yeah i, I got lucky that way too um I just kind of beat I just kept taking the questions till I started getting seventies, like practice quizzes. And then I just took it and first time. So I feel you on that one. So we, we, both of you guys, I have some, some common interests with. And so that, that makes this a little easier. So um, I'm hoping that you guys have this book already. Um, there should have been a download that was attached to this when you joined the meetup, if that's how you came through. Um, let me know now if you haven't, that way I can kind of just stick uh, a link in the chat box for you guys to, to, to get that later and you could just follow along either now or, you know, check it out later, but you're going to need that if you're going to keep coming to these classes and the recordings are going to make a lot more sense because I'm going to be referring to these chapters. Did you guys both get that? Yes, and I downloaded it. Yes, I do not. For some reason, the link wasn't any good and I had to re-register again. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna try to give you the direct uh, link in the chat, um, and hopefully that will get you th that downloaded to you um, right now. I mean, if you want, so try that. Let me know if you have any problems, and we'll go from there. So um, kind of like this. So this 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 came this this whole book came from, I was invited to do, you know, the typical real estate investor kind of like, you know, Hey, a bunch of us are going to get together and, you know, local experts come together and talk about real estate investing. And so everybody was talking about wholesaling or fix and flip or buy and hold. And I kind of was just like bored with all that. So I decided to do something different and just kind of talk. I wanted to talk about um, how, how to stand out amongst these people because you know 
companies themselves, people name their companies like, you know, XYZ Holdings and um, I don't know, capital investments and all these things. And there's really no kind of connection to when you advertise that, I guess. Like that's okay if that's your LLC or your business, but people don't connect to you. So for example, Mario, like maybe you're in Century 21 or um, I don't know, um, what's the other ones? Uh, Berkshire Hathaway or, or, or whatever, whatever all the other ones are out there, right? So when you go into these places, it's like, that's the company, right? But you don't hear about any of the people that are in that company. That's why they have the ex, you know, the Mario Ronchetti team, or you're under a team, which has like, they have a little bit of branding and then you're under that person. So one of the things, personal branding, whether you're staying in crypto and trading, whether you're going to be in real estate is your personal brand goes with you. So for example, if Mario decided to go from Century 21 to Berkshire Hathaway, his personal branding will go with them. He could not take the jacket, the colors, all the stuff that came with the other sort of um, business. He can't take that with him. All he can take is his name. So this is why personal branding more than a, your personal brand is, is your business, right? So that you need to start thinking of it that way, right? So that's what this whole thing was, was a PowerPoint that I turned into this kind of, you know, comic booky looking thing because uh, my whole brand has always been about family and fun. So, you know, what I started out with and I'll start getting into that soon was like a dad, right? A da dad is family, you know, daddy's fast cash and fast cash was about solving a problem. So daddy's fast cash and he came, became this sort of alter ego superhero version of myself that I used to in my communications with people and in my, in my marketing where, you know, there's, you, you get offered 10 houses, like you get emails with 10 houses. You have, everybody's talking about the numbers, this and that, and call me. And I'm talking about comic books and videos of the house itself and random other things and joking around. And that's my email. So if you have 10 emails of the same thing, which would you rather go through? the plain Jane kind of like boom, boom, boom. And then you're still going to call for um, more details or the one that sort of edutains and entertains and edu educates you at the same time. That's kind of the way I took. So that's kind of like what I'm trying to get across here on how to do that kind of stuff. Um, this introduction is kind of like, you know, this cleverness, right? You know, you see something and I, I always thought this sign was clever because it, it kind of makes you say, oh, I, I see what you did there, right? So the more times people would stop and like look at what you did and be like, and appreciate that versus you just being noise and marketing, that's what you want, people to stop, people to care about what you, who you are and what you do, uh, who you are first before what you do. That's more important because what you do, nobody, like what if they don't want your service right now, then how are they gonna remember you, right? So. Mario, you're in, you know, in the real estate business. What if someone is not buying or selling right now? How are they going to remember that you when they want to buy or sell? What is it that made them, what's, that, what, what's going to make them remember you when they want to do that? It's probably something you might be doing every day. Like, I don't know, um, I, maybe you have a hobby, right? So let, yeah, let me start getting into this because I'm going to start talking about that kind of stuff. So first there's, you know, what's in a name, right? So when I created the branding, I gave myself an alter ego nickname. I like to say to people that this is this is just an, uh, a, a not a better version of you. Like this is a presentation of you, of you know, the the um, the always smiling, the happy go lucky version of you, the superhero you. You're the same person, you know. When Superman, when Clark Kent takes off his clothes, he's Superman. You're he's still the guy, same guy. He's just You've taken off one kind of thing and putting on another mantle. Same thing from Batman to, you know, or, or Iron Man. You know, when he put, Tony Stark puts on his suit, he's Iron Man, but he's still Tony Stark. So it's kind of like, this is the super you, right? Not the fake you, you're still authentic. It's just the version of you that doesn't, doesn't get caught, doesn't, is not a complainer, that is not a negative person, that's not super political, or we start in trouble. You know, the petty you, it's not the petty you, it's the super you, if that makes any sense, right? So you have to kind of, I, I gave myself a name to remind myself of what to live up to. And for you, I don't know what that's going to be. It could be your name. 
if you you know if you if your mindset is right it could just be you but it's like the better version of you that you put on when you're dealing with people uh and i have it right here um there's a book called the um the the world's greatest salesman and there's a lot of stuff inside that book that would probably help you kind of start to get that the, the the idea of what the present the way you present yourself and how you how you are remembered in people's heads and this is kind of digging into some of that theory so um so who is daddy's fast cash right so he as I, as I did here is like these are all versions of the same person so i put this down here like you know he's a dad he's a designer he's an investor he's a joker he's a coach he's a latino patriot firefighter these are all the things that i have been because i'm pretty sure you guys are more than just a real estate investor and more than just a crypto investor you know patricia said you do design Mario, did you have any other, before you were doing real estate um, as a, as an agent or, you know, what were you doing before then? Um, I actually been trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up for the last couple of years. So I, you've done a I, lot came, of I came from the grocery business. Um, I worked in the grocery store for quite a few years and then I owned a bread route uh, for about 14 years and I sold it about four years ago. Okay, so the bread route, that's, that's interesting. Um, why I ask is because part of all this, like these, like, you know, what does firefighting have to do with real estate? Don't know yet. I mean, if I'm in a, a fire damaged property, I could speak about stuff, you know, fire related stuff, which I actually did. Um, the, the Latino version, right? Like, it's kind of like, okay, so I could speak about things in Spanish. Um, it can be all be the same things. And, and I, and I also did these because as you can see, they were just kind of like holiday versions. And this was just me kind of having fun because I like to do this kind of stuff. This was my passion, my hobby. Right. So I ask you about your other, the other things you do in your passion, your hobby, because this is a, an example of how I mix the two together. And I did it in such a colorful way that it would catch people's attention especially when I would do like the holiday ones, because then it, you know, I, I give it a I kind of do a twist on the name and, you know, these things cost me uh, 20, 30 bucks every time I did a new one. But the point I'm trying to make, and you don't have to be an artist. You can, I, I, I've never drawn any of these. So I'm surrounded by art that I didn't draw. Why? I commissioned it. I found the right people. I art designed it. So I'm a designer more than I'm an artist. But to that end, I was able to take this kind of stuff and, you know, make it more me so that it became more entertaining and more eye candy and that's what the first thing you want you want to stand out somehow right so that's when we start talking about logos and and things like that but a nickname is kind of the first thing so um you know people with nicknames are often remembered more than regular names because how many marios might a person know i know a lot of people that know a lot of jasons and so it's like well what jason it's like well if i say daddy 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 fast cash they already they automatically know that that's the one they know exactly who that is. Could be a bunch of people might know some Patties, some Marios, and the more your influence grows, the you know certain people are going to know a lot of people with a similar name. You want to stand out. So, how that came to be, you know, how that could work is, you know, to say Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy was P Diddy, and then he was um, Sean Combs, his real name, and it kind of evolved. But people either will give you a nickname, maybe you had one from before. You can create one for these purposes i've seen that done before for example in the philadelphia market mike mccann the real estate man that rhymes really well so that was his branding and to tell you the truth not many people can get something that on the nose that sounds and, and rings off your you know rings in your memory so you got to start thinking like that like um how can i take my name and make it either rhyme or in 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 embedded in the thing that I'm doing. Not just that, okay? Because what you're doing, remember I said you your job is not you. You this is the thing you do. It's your your passion too. Like what can you take that you do passionately and mix that together with um this this job or 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 whatever you're trying to do. That's where it becomes more um important uh, more weighty, um, has more impact, right? So the nickname part, I mean, here's some, some help with that, right? And, you know, when you, when you go through it, you can kind of just kind of, um, think about that a little bit more, but a little bit more, 
uh, you know, rhyming words, a quality you might have, um, something you do, a hobby you have. Um, these are all things that can help you with that. So Patricia, as a designer, a former designer, might, um, um, I'm trying to think how you would mix those two, um, Forex and design, but you don't have to. It's just, okay, so for example, I'll, I'll give you an idea. Mm -hmm. Patricia, for example, in your communications about crypto, maybe people know you for that, maybe they don't, right? So right. however how, however you market yourself now, you market like on Facebook, social media, uh, give me a second. If you market on, on Facebook and social media, um, you could be doing dry crypto stuff. You could be like, look at the market, um, you know, it's up, it's up. People don't really attach to that. But what if in your communications, like people, you talk more about design and, 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 and the things that go with it. And then you integrate the Forex into it somehow because there's, there's probably more interest in your design background than there okay. is right now in trying to, for, for a person trying to wrap their mind around Forex because there's a lot of pieces to it, right? It's not, it's not the simplest thing in the world. And the other thing is too is, I, okay, so if someone came to me with a Forex deal, the first thing I'm thinking is, I don't know, I want to be stuck in front of a computer all day looking at pips, right? Like, and just being, having to wake up early and kind of, you know, be watching your computer all the time because that that's addictive, right? Not only that, but you're, you're not out in the world. So if you could frame your lifestyle, mm -hmm. like I'm successful at this and I get to use what I make from this to do more design stuff and I'm sharing the design stuff with you, people will take, will take that trail of bed comes back to you because design stuff is always gonna get people's attention. So in your emails, let's say if you have an email list, right? Mm -hmm. You would take, um, instead of it just being like a plain Jane, hey, the market and, you know, get crypto now and here's the deals. I would make it like a design newsletter and then also stuff about, about, about Forex. And maybe you could even, you know, what might be interesting is a lot of these Forex, um, I mean, a lot of platforms have interesting user experiences and interesting looks. Mm -hmm. So maybe as a designer, you can look at these and from a designer point and kind of talk about them and why you like them and why you don't like others. Okay. Because maybe that's going to spark. That's like kind of, kind of coming in sideways. You're talking about the thing you want people to get their attention on, but you're talking about it in a way that other people can actually give an opinion on because nobody knows if what you do is working. They have to actually buy something, try before, try, and there's no try before you buy with Forex. It's like, <laughs> you got to try it, but they're going to look at somebody who's doing it and be like, oh, wow, look, like I'm not, I never looked at it that way. I'm just seeing all the, like the headache and the, the standing in front of the screen, but I'm not really looking at it from a d d design perspective. And that's kind of interesting. So I'm not saying that's the right way. I'm just saying to start to look for things that are kind of like, and like, like congruent. Okay. Who you are. Cause you're, des you're design. And I don't know if that's your passion. You could be passionate about something else, but I'm trying to get you the idea I'm trying to get across to you is find a way that takes something that you're passionate about and something that you're like, you know, that is your business and mix the two together like Reese's peanut butter cup. We get a beautiful, con you know, concoction from that. Another a, a real estate um, lady that I, I helped. She she was um, she was like, how do I get how to do more affiliate marketing and be able to post more deals? I'm like, well, I said, what are you into? She goes, I love wine. She, I said, well, why don't you? You could be the wine lady, and so the the wine. Um, represents like higher end clients anyway, right? So if you judge the property, like an investment property, like you would judge a wine and you kind of compare the two, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how they describe, some Maliers, um describe wine. It has a bold taste. It's a, it's a Cabernet, it's a, a white or whatever, all the phrases that they use, right? But mm -hmm. you actually compare the investment in a way you would compare wine. And then you talked a little bit about wine too and investing. There's a cross section of people there. They might not 
think too much of your investment at that time because people realistically only buy so many houses in their lifetime, one, two, maybe three, and that's it, unless they're investors. Okay. But the wine stuff, you know, people of means buy wine, right? So if you sort of took that approach to it, you might not appeal to everybody, but A, you would stand out. They'll either like you or not like you, but at least they'll know who you are, right? right. Instead of not care about you at all. So you're either going to attract or repel people, which okay. is what you want to do anyway. You right. want to just, even the people you repel, if they, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about social media and, and we're manipulated by it all the time. If you post something on purpose that is, you know, is going to, people are going to get complained about it and start yakking and, and, and calling you names over that actually helps your algorithm, the algorithm for you to anything else you post after that gets seen by more people. <laughs> okay. So one of the favorite tricks by people on social media is go put something out there, controversial, ask a question or something funny, get people talking about it. And then based off of that, put something else out there and get a little more favorable um, you get more looks on it because Facebook, right, you know, shows your post to more people because they know that most more people will um, comment on your post based off of like your record of, you know, the other ones. They don't judge them by subject matter. They just judge them by comments, likes, shares, all that other stuff, right? So that's the algorithm. That, that's the way that works. Okay. Um, another person I was, um, we just helped this week was he's getting into card collecting. And so, you know, he was struggling with like, how do I, how do I stand out? How, how do I, you know, what's going to resonate with people? Mm -hmm. And um, we came, what we came up is um, he wants to do a challenge. So we called it the, the crypto, crypto miner challenge, right? I'm not crypto miner, card miners challenge, because he's mm -hmm. a card collector and he wants to do mm -hmm. a card collecting sort of offer. Mm -hmm. For people that are brand new to co collecting cards, you know, come through, kind of assess what they have in their basement. So he's not appealing to experts because the experts are not really the customer you want. You want people that have um, a basements full of cards and they're probably in their, you know, late 30s to early 50s and they have cards. They don't know what they have. They just know they're there. Mm -hmm. And this the, the idea of mining cards is kind of like mining crypto, mining diamonds, mining gold. You, you have stuff around you that's worth, that's valuable. You don't know what it is and you don't have time to go out there and start doing all the research. But if you were with a group of other people who could help you with that and one person would take you through that online, that inspires you to go, hey, I might as well just kind of see what I have here because it's sitting there. You just haven't been incentivized enough. It wasn't exciting to you. But now if you're a card miner, like a gold miner or a crypto miner, like, oh, that's the buzzword mining, right? So mm -hmm. that he got really excited by that. We worked out like how his logo should look. And now he's on the path to getting an offer together that's based off of that idea, which took his passion and like something that was, um, sorry, um, kind of, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, up, uh, up to date, um, you know, trending, there you go. Something that was trending and put the two together in a nice little sandwich. And now he has something he can kind of be inspired with, make his, his logo and his branding about and, and move forward. So that's why like the naming part is really important and the taking of the multiple things that you're interested in mm -hmm. and putting them together is really important too. So that's chapter one. And now, you know, I'll just take questions if you have questions about branding and Chadrick, I know you're just listening in and you came in a little late, um, do you have the copy of this downloaded yet, or is this kind of new to you? Because you might have just came in through the meetup and didn't get that. All right. Well, Chadrick, if you can hear me, um, I know it takes some time to answer, a little time to answer sometimes. I put a link to it in the chat. Um, so if you don't have this document, you can just go in the chat and try that out and it should get you the document and you can have this for the rest of the class and, you know, and, and so on. And by the way, you guys will all get some kind of email, which will, these are all recorded so that you can go back and access them. If you forgot something, if you weren't taking notes, or if you just want to go back through all of the classes and just something you missed there's a, a, you know, I'll be emailing you. If you, if you got this document, you'll get an email over the weekend. That'll take you back to the playlist on, on YouTube that has them all. So you can kind of go through at your leisure 
and and you know this kind of stuff you know there's a there's mm -hmm. inside of those inside of those videos is tri is um people asking questions and some of those questions might apply to you and you know you can you know help help you out with what you're doing now so patricia since mario kind of just got up um do you have any questions for me or some you know something you want to um some insight on not that I can think of. You've been very thorough thus far, and I've been taking notes. So no, not at the moment. Yeah. So what what came up for you as far as like an idea that you might want to take and, and apply to um, to trading? Um, it's not big. It's not Bitcoin. You're trading. You're trading. Um, ah, Foreign exchange currency, and um, I am also getting into the crypto. Got it. So you see this character right here I'm circling? Yes. So I created something called the Bitcoin matrix a long time ago. This was like oh. back before. And I created this version of him because it looks like Neo and okay. it was kind of like the matrix. Gotcha. So I just took this guy, made him, Neo'd him up and I used that. So if you're already branded like somewhat in the designer space and you have okay. some like already existing elements, maybe you evolve them kind of like this into something else. You know what I mean? Okay. This is just an idea. I just had fun with it. Um, but, you know, I, I only brought that up to say like, when I'm, when I'm, whenever I talk about different things, I put on a different outfit, if that makes sense, or a different hat. Sure. If you want sure. to. So it's still me, excuse me, it's still me. It's just a me that's more appropriate to that conversation, if that makes sense. Sure. Okay. Mario, do you have any, um, thoughts, questions. Um, like I said, I, I was an agent. Um, I didn't like it because <laughs> I, because I was more than an investor. So as a wholesaler and investor, and you know, I didn't have time to, I didn't really like showing houses or anything like that. I was just, I'm buying fixer uppers. Most people like, you know, they have high stand, they have, um, <laughs> Ritz, Ritz Carlton, um, standards, but Ritz, Ritz crackers on budgets sometimes. And I got tired of like, that so i didn't want to deal with that kind of customer so i just didn't i would i would just team up with another agent and be like look you can have half the commission just do the paperwork and take care of that if it came my way um but you know i did i do do a lot of stuff in real estate so if you have questions regarding that um i can probably help i do completely agree with what you just said mm -hmm. and uh working with the public trying to buy houses they can be a royal pain in the butt um they will, there is no loyalty. Um, and I'm like, you. Yeah, I'm kind of real estate. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm almost like it's on my way out. I'm really focusing more on the credit repair, but something just kind of thinking about your, uh, your Neo and your other little characters there. This was the first one that come in mind for me and I'll put it up. Can you see that? Yeah. looks like an M. What does that remind you of? Um, I was going to say, in my head, it was like something like um, Pokemon. Super Mario. Okay, there you go. I know it's something cartoon. So I Super mean, it's, Mario, it's, something, it's something to kind of, um, people it, would remember it. It's actually good. Like, all right, so let's say, let's say you became Super Mario, Super Credit, Super, um, super Credit Mario. You could, why? That's not taken, right? Right. Uh, or super credit or Mario like like that you can play with because you could imitate a lot of the things you already got the mustache you could wear it and you could do videos in that character voice and just play with it and some of your graphics and some of your communications could reflect the game I would not worry about Nintendo or anybody coming after you for that because you're not I'm not saying you're not aspiring to be higher but you're not like on their level like you're not taking any money out their mouth people get that you're not that guy you're just doing a shtick but yeah. for some people like you don't have to do it all the time but you could like do some funny little videos off of it playing video games put yourself in a video games there's all kind of ways you can play with that um and i would definitely and you know even going so far as to like play a game where you know where he's jumping around and coins are coming up i mean that could represent like increases in credit score and stuff like that so there's a lot there's a lot you could unpack there that would help you with that and um you know <laughs> credit repair 
I, with what's going on, you know, now with the foreclosures and all that, I mean, that's going to definitely boom. And if you want that kind of customer and you have a great um, process for that, where you're not, um, it's easy for them to understand and you can create that. And maybe that's part of your branding too. educate them in the process in a fun way. You could have a lot of fun with that. I mean, you know, that, that works for me. Like I, that would stand out to me. If your name's Mario and you're do you're wearing that Mario hat and you're talking about credit and you talk, you call yourself super credit Mario. Like I would just be like, I'm watching that guy. Cause you know, I like Mario brothers and I got, you know, I had the game at some point and played it. So that's going to, that's going to cut through a lot of the noise of other people doing credit repair, to be honest with you. In fact, one of like back to the nickname thing. Um, what, so in real estate, you know, there was the king of wholesaling and the short sale kid. And, um, you know, there's the people that have given themselves names that rose above because they didn't just give themselves a name, but they marketed it with that. And they kind of played a game with it and did videos with it. The game being like, you know, just creating content that wasn't necessarily strictly real estate. It was just kind of like them getting together and doing stuff together that that's kind of what inspired me. Cause I didn't think this was, I thought this was too outlandish until I met a guy named Preston Ely, who, Preston Eli, who did, um, he did, he, he, he would call himself the king of wholesaling. He didn't do cartoon stuff, but he just talked outrageously. Like he said, whatever he wanted to say, he wrote funny, long emails and he made me pay attention to them. So I, to the point where I actually paid for his coaching. So that gave me the idea to take it a step further and do this whole thing. Cause if I can't be the number one wholesaler, I could be the number one cartoon wholesaler. So that became my blue ocean. So you got to look at who's the blue ocean for you. Credit repair is not a blue ocean. It's a very red ocean. And if you know what that means, like blue ocean means wide open. There's not a lot of people in that space. You know, it's not crowded. Not, not, not everybody going for the same, you know, dollar red ocean. Everybody's going after the same people, right? you can create your own blue ocean inside that space by simply being like the best cartoon credit repair person. Like, look, Geico and the general, those guys stood out in the, in, you know, in the insurance space simply off of their little cartoons. So you got to definitely think like that. And if you are comfortable with that idea, I would develop it further. I start playing around with some graphics, go on Canva and like put some things together. This book will take you through like how to start figuring out your branding and your colors and your um, your art, you know, whoever you want to hire to do graphics, but there's a lot of things you could do on your own to get there that gets it like makes it a little bit cheaper and Canva, even the free version is a good way to start to get your ideas, your colors down and your ideas of what you want your character to look like and all that for cheap. And then when you're ready to pay for it, you can show them, Hey, this is what I whipped up. It's not perfect, but I want something like this makes it a lot easier when you're, when you're dealing with your designers. That's how I did all this. I took pictures that I liked, screenshot them, wrote notes on the screenshots. I like this guy's hair. I like this guy's outfit. I want these colors, but you know, here, and then I send them to the designer and he would send me a version. I'd be like, all right, fix the mouth here, fix the hand there. And we're good. And we got to a point where, you know, one, Three, the most I think would be like three times back and forth and we were good because he started to get my style. So yeah, like that, that was, um, you know, that's how I did all this. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 you can, once you have a clear vision of where you want it to go, this stuff becomes easy. People look at that. They're like, well, how do you think of all this stuff? I was like, well, in my head, this is easy because I already had a clear picture of who he is. And it's just a guy putting on different costumes. One for Thanksgiving and one for Halloween and one for Patriots Day and one for Easter and one as a referee, as a coach referee. And, you know, a college guy, this brand new one was like simply I made this because it was a university and it was branding. And I and I used the DAD because he's dad on his chest. And like if anybody even notices that, I don't really care. But to me, it was like I just made an online college thing out of it called it brand new. And here we are. So that's how these things happen. Any um, any other questions as far as that goes? I think you should run with it. Well, with your, I mean, I, I've messed with Canva for a while, so I'm familiar with it. When you did your, I guess your sketches on Canva, who was it that 
you contacted about getting these finished products you've got here? I so mean, somebody, down, somebody online or just somebody? Yeah, so, so down here, I give you some resources with that. Um, I would say, look, you can do Fiverr or you can do 99 Designs and there's other, other ones. I'm trying to find where I put it. Uh, okay. Okay, so it's in the book. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. With fi okay, so with Fiverr, what I would suggest for anybody, that if you're going to go with Fiverr for, for that kind of stuff, and I don't know if you know what Fiverr.com is, but you can go on and like, it's basically a bunch of people have, there are designers and you can pay based on pricing. It doesn't, it's, it used to be $5 a gig, like, and sometimes you will find that, but, excuse me, but it's not there anymore. It's usually higher, but what I would say is, if you're just starting out, don't get super caught up in the finished product yet. I would go on Canva, maybe, you know, try to, cause Canva has like some nice logo, just templates. So I'll play around in there, try to find something that's okay. If you're gonna do a character, put the character in, um, throw a little hat on them. Because like I said, there's bits and pieces you can put in there and, and layers and it's almost like a Photoshop and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just like, okay, here's this image I want. I want it kind of like this, you know, obviously make it a little bit more smooth. I can't use this one. Or maybe you do like it. I don't know. You might make something you like. But then I would take that and go on to Fiverr and hire three to four different cheap graphic artists and say, hey, I want a logo like this. Here's the idea. Give me a better version of this, like, you know, smaller hat, whatever the details you want fixed. And, you know, and an idea for like, you know, how the graphic, the logo, what that's going to look like. Again, on Canva, you can play around with it and you can find stuff on there. And you can just say, I want it to look as close to this as possible. You give it to them and see who comes the best, who, who does the best job. The thing about Fiverr is if it's so cheap, even if you get three to four, like out of the three to four, one or two of them are gonna be good. The other two might be trash, but like you got to, you got more sources bidding on it and you have like more, like to, more to work with. You might like, you might, hate to and love to and then you have to just go between the two and then once you're the cool thing too is once you have your logo down and all that you keep their information you can start doing what i do and do different outfits or different like po like mo like you want to you want to have all your like if you're doing logos or characters let's say you want to try to get as many different um sort of poses as possible because you could use all those things in your emails your communications and your posts i do it all the time i take these things on pngs or um yeah pngs remove the backgrounds and like, I'll just put like little, uh, I don't know, speech bubbles and I'll make like a whole new post out of it. So I don't have to keep calling those guys inside Canva. You can do all that or um, uh, another one like ev back background eraser, pic Pixlr. There's another app like photo apps and stuff on your phone. You can just grab these things, put them in there and keep playing with them and make your own, like you could keep remixing them over and over and over again. Once you have those PNGs with like the, basically the transparent backgrounds you put them on any background and that could become your, your, your branding. Uh, let me show you one just so I can give you an idea. Cause that would probably help you more. Uh, stop sharing. Okay. Let me find Give me one second. All right. So you can see the page, right? So for example, um, I don't know why that's there like that. This was me helping the guy yesterday a little bit with his, we just, we were just kind of getting ideas for it, but then there was better ones at this, but as you can see, there's like all these logos you can start to bring in like, you know, this one and these are, they're kind of cool. So you don't have to like say, stay stuck with, you don't want to go crazy in there and just kind of like make that your whole life, but there's a lot in there. So what I was talking about background removals is I like, so this version of this guy is like, he, this is my dad labs, which is, I mean, I'll talk to you about that real quick, but he, you know, whenever I want to make something like this was like a flyer or something, I just take this, which is over in here somewhere with these move backgrounds. And I just move them around and use them as I need to do other things, you know, to put, put stuff in, move stuff around. And that makes it easy for me to make other art without actually having to pay for it. 
I mean, it takes me time, but I like to do it. Other people might not like to do it, so I would leave it to designers. But like I say, Canva is pretty fun and free. This is the paid version, so I don't, you know, some of them don't have access to everything. But if you were just looking for, let me see, um, video, let's just say video game. Right, so look, you got lots of stuff you can play with. I mean, let me see, Mario. Uh, oh, look, so you could ca you could kind of have a whole, got a whole bunch of things here you can start to play with to get your idea across on poses and things, spark your spark your imagination. But like something like this right here, and you see how it says pro? Well, yeah, it's, about, yeah, it's like a hundred something a year, but it's, it's so worth it. You can start using all this stuff. So you could basically take this Mario hat, put it on a picture of you. It doesn't have to look exactly like this is this, this would be the kind of like the trademark version of them. But I don't think this, this right here would be a version of that, but people would get it, you know? So there's a lot of ideas and here's the coins and you can go in there and have, and have fun with it. You now here's the blocks. They actually had like a, the landscape over here, look right here. So I would go in there and start playing with that idea. Um, just to, you know, to have fun while you're not like doing anything. And then ask people too. You could always ask people like, hey, what do you think of this idea? People were like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And those become, you know, they'll start to pay attention to you because they want to see the development, especially if they actually offered an opinion. So there's that too. Um, yeah, um, so I guess that's it for today. If you guys have any more questions, let me see what else. Um, if you don't, um, know already, like um, you might have come in through the uh, the meetup, right? So if you don't if you don't know about the meetup uh, on Saturdays at this time, it's a real estate meetup and we go through 52 um, wealth principles and it's a lot of people within the Alchemist Nation. I'm, I'm a part of that. And I just do this because like, you know, nobody else is talking about branding heavy. They talk about more about financial stuff and investing in real estate, but not just that. It's just like financial principles. So we kind of go through that, you know, 52 weeks a year and then they, you know, rotate back through. So you're all invited to that. Here's the information for that right there. If you want to take a look at that. For me, um, you know, if, if for me, if, if you wanted to, if you think of me, what you could do me a favor for is um, I actually have a, well, I have a show that I do for dad entrepreneurs. That's one, but um, what I'm really passionate about, what I really do a lot now, other than the real estate, which is kind of like more uh, passive is I help people bring, you know, their ideas to life through apps. So if someone had a big idea and they were trying, they didn't really know how to bring it to market. If we like it and if you do the work, we'll, we would possibly joint venture with you. So that's my, my, um, my, form for that would be dadlabs.tech. And then I we actually have a version of that for young people called the Young Entrepreneurs Movement. Well, if you know a young person who like, you know, coming out of uh, high school or going into, going into college has big ideas and they want an opportunity to potentially work with a tech company and be, um, you know, uh, bought in. Let me see, let's see where, you know, these are the three, these are the three things that they could, uh, wrong one, sorry. Oh, I don't know why that's coming up. Let me stop. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to find the right, the right graphic, which is not coming up. <laughs> Can you see anything? What do you see? Yep. Okay. What do you see on the screen right now? Win one, win two, win three. Got it. Okay. So with the young entrepreneurs movement, um, it's like a certification and if they pass, these are the things that, that, that will benefit this young person. They can figure out their big tech idea and potentially co-found the company with Sila. And I can attest to that because that's actually what happened with me and these people. Um, they, could, they, don't fit, they don't have a big idea, but they want to step into entrepreneurship and become an entrepreneur in residence. They would be an operator. So for example, once my app is built, if I don't want to do day-to-day -day activities, these per people will be trained to do day-to-day -day activities. They would receive um, not only a salary, but actually I believe they get a little equity. So three to five years, they could be really set if they did a good job. And then this number three is, you know, if you do both, uh, you end up, you know, they could possibly develop their own app and be their own CEO, CEO, COO as well too. So 
that's what's in it for the young people. If you guys have any interest in that, um, let me know and you can, uh, you can hit me up on Facebook or something. I'll stick that in the chat as well, just so that you have it. Um, yeah. And I mean, I mean, if you don't have any more questions, um, I mean, I guess that would be all I had, <laughs> all I have right now. I have a question kind of off the branding. Sure. Uh, just, just curiosity. Uh, where are you located and how is the ho uh, housing market there? <laughs> I'm in Florida now. I was in Philadelphia most of my life until about a year ago. And in both places, it's crazy. It just depends on what kind of house you want. Right. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, yeah, I, it's a, it's I a, it's a seller's it. market because the, the inventory is low right now. So buyers are being challenged because they're having to come up with more than asking or they want, you know, they want to deal, but it's not like before where you could go in with an offer and um, just hope, you know, cross your fingers and hope they're going to take it. Like people are not taking offers. I mean, they're take, they're, they're, they don't, they don't need to take like low ball offers, even asking offers normally if the house is even halfway decent especially here in florida like you're getting over asking offers and not just one or two 40 of them so yeah for the yeah buyer, we're, it's hard yeah i mean i'm not real real far from you i'm in the charlotte area so i mean about 60 percent of the houses here are going for over asking and about 30 percent right at and then about 10 percent under so it's, I mean, I, I was just curious anytime I talk to anybody when they're in a different part of the country, I just ask just to see if, I mean, I pretty much know we're all in the same boat, but it's better to hear from somebody that's actually in it. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I'm seeing it all around me. And um, when we, we, you know, personally, we got lucky because we, you know, I decided to move when COVID decided to, well, when the government decided to make COVID the ruler of all. And I, I got tired of dealing with it in Pennsylvania because it was just, it was, it was oppressive, excessive, and didn't make any sense. So I decided to move. I was able to, cause um, you know, I, I, I was able to retire at that point um, through, due to, you know, the other th adventures I had going on. I mean, I didn't have to have the job that I had. I liked it. Uh, that's another thing, you know, if you're an investor, you don't have to, you don't have to, um, be a full-time investor you could always have a night you should have a job if, if anything it looks better for your ta your um your taxes um but you don't have to leave and become a full-time entrepreneur like just because everybody else is doing that if you actually like what you do you can be one on the side that's what i did for a lot of years and now now i'm full-time but i didn't want to i there was no need for me to do it either like i like to do both so that um you know, and, and, and your life choice, you know, whatever path you choose, is not going to be wrong. It's whatever's right for you. So. Gotcha. I understand that. I mean, I'm, I, I play on the side, like for Trisha, I, I play in the market and actually this whole uh, call that we've been doing, I've been going back and forth. I got my computer next to me, but watching the market, uh, uh, which one? Uh, it's something I like to do. I mean, I, I bought one yesterday and sold it today and made almost 6% gain. Hey, I'll take that all day long in less than 24 hours. Is this Forex or something else? No, just plain regular stocks. Got it. Yeah. I mean, if you're not, if you're not out there doing business some, in another way, why not? Right. As long as the right. feet don't kill you. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the trick. You start getting happy trading. And it's like, uh, you look, you look, you're like, you're like oh, all that work, and it's kind of like break even because all these fees. So, well, that's the nice, sweet thing about it is that uh, trading regular blue chips now there is no trading fees. Well, there's Robinhood that, helped. Robinhood paved the way for that. That I mean that that's cool. I mean, yeah, I I, I realize that. Um, I guess I'm talking more about the crypto stuff. Um, but then there's also going to be the tax ramifications of it, but we don't know what they are yet. So, anyway. mm -hmm. sure. yeah. And and to be honest with you, all the talk that they do, I don't I don't think they're ready for the opposite side of the coin. When they say they want to tax uh, capital gains on crypto gains, are you going to um, credit um, forty percent or eighty percent capital losses on the people that made the losses? Like, are you what are you going to do about that? 
because like you know when you when you're a gambler in in um in uh you know and you keep your receipts let's say you're able to write that off so before you want to open that pandora's box make sure you realize that for all those winners out there more people lost and you might be giving back way more than you're trying to tax so you know and put I, everybody else in the poorhouse at the same time that's what i'm saying they're, they're they're trying they're trying to get a handle on something they have no capacity to yeah do i mean you can't I, mean, I wish they would look into history and look the more you tax people the less willing they are to work so then you have more people taking that money from the government and less people putting into it and then what eventually happens it collapses oh. it, i mean for a free market to work properly it, you have to lower taxes you have to well let's not get into politics now because we'll, <laughs> <Right. laughs> we'll have people flaming us on facebook or or, or yeah. youtube over this this little discussion on on nothing because nobody asked them their opinion anyway so anyway okay. um <laughs> let's keep let's keep it to this the personal branding um but yeah i appreciate it I, I do i do agree with you it's just it's a it's a wormhole i'm sorry it's a deep deep dark pit of despair if we start talking about that stuff and that's not the kind of friday i want to have i don't know about you but <laughs> yeah I, sorry I, I wasn't trying to no no that. i know i know but i i, I just way. know what happens <laughs> all right so check this out um if hopefully I'll see you guys again, if not, I mean, like I said, this, you can go back and reference some of this stuff, but yeah, every Friday and, and that's the occasional Friday where like the internet has been off or some random emergency. I do this every Friday. So you're welcome to join in again, ask questions. Um, I put my Facebook profile in there. If you guys want to reach out to me and then, like I said, feel free to join the, the millionaire, um, uh, thing tomorrow, um, Friday. If, if you guys need to see that again, let me know. But yeah, um, you know, hopefully that this was of some value to you guys. And you know, I'll see you again and we can continue talking about this stuff. Okay. Thanks, Jason. I enjoyed it. Well, you're welcome. And Chadrick, I'm glad. I mean, it was great to meet you, even though we don't even know what you look like or sound like. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that, big guy. Uh, sorry. I've been I've been on the phone uh, tackling some deals as far as the real estate go, but it was interesting to hear y'all uh, views on the crypto because me, I'm new to it, but so much, so much going towards that direction, man. It doesn't. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like you know, do I miss out on it or do I wait to see what happens? This is what you do first. You got to get education. Um, hit me up on Facebook. My pro, my things in the chat. Um. I have some stuff that you can look into and I'm pretty sure, you know, some of the other ones here do too. Um, I will say this first, the first thing to do is just to understand how it all works. And that like, what well, we were just discussing fees there, there's lots of fees in there. So there's a lot, a lot of upside, but there's a lot of people making money in between. So just realize that part. The other two right. is like kind of like have a, have a goal, like don't, just be like, oh, I'm rich. And you know, you go on and then you, the market dives again and you're not rich anymore. You gotta like be around some people, get in some, excuse me, get in some groups. Um, like I say, get educated, but like it, you gotta start because it doesn't matter what, this is the way the world's going. I mean, Visa just did a deal and now they have a coin that they can use as US, US, um, DC USDC. Now. Yeah, yeah, USDC now. So that's becoming like a big thing now. I mean, it, it makes it makes a lot of these transactions easier. So the more easier this stuff becomes, the more the market's going to kind of flatten. So you kind of want to get in there ahead and start to realize like, hey, there's there's the trading part, which is one, but then there's the staking part and the pools and there's the the the, the decks, the indexes, and there's all kinds of things in there that are actually contributing towards the growth of all this stuff that you might want to dip into because maybe that's more your speed. There's a lot. Yeah. So, so my question for you, like they have something, what you just talked about was a stable coin, USDC. It's one of the stable coins, like Tether or Tether. But yeah, anyway, it's te uh, it's tether. yeah. So I was going to ask about the DeFi um, aspect because that's like a, it's like a savings tool or something like that with DeFi. I'm not sure. I'm it's still learning. If you stake it, that that's what like the DeFi coins are, um, you know, depending on what what they are. Like I guess you're talking about like Safe Moon and um, I mean the stuff that's kind of involved in the swap, uh, Pancake Swap and um, 
I mean, there's, there's, it's, this will go forever. <laughs> like, like I said, hit me up. I mean, there, there's, there's opportunities out there to get educated and, and make money at the same time doing this stuff. You just gotta right. kinda like, is this going to be your lane for now? Cause real estate does go well with this. When you know, so let's put it this way. When you know that you can, instead of dropping 50 grand on a house or really more than that these days, but like, and getting like a five or $600, like say you drop, drop a hundred grand and you're getting like five or $600 a month cash flow on it, but you could put, take half that money and do three times that in crypto without all that work. What are you going to do now? I'm not saying do one only. I'm just saying maybe while the market's kind of like not doing so well for a flipper or, you know, making a wholesale deal, you do some of this until it starts to make sense. That's what I'm saying. You got to have more than one one avenue of income right and diversify yeah yeah, yeah. So, so one I, guy I was, yeah one guy i was watching he said that uh with inflation coming and the devaluation of the dollar is just uh it's just uh what they call it a, um um i'm not gonna say a savings but it's kind of like a uh, hedge yeah hedge against inflation or yeah, some what, people that's what gold and silver has always been but they're not they're not as easy to use, right? Jewels, diamonds, all that stuff. That's like, it's there, but it's there's a market for it. You just gotta know where that market is and how to get into it. So you have some of that stuff and it's stable, but when you need to, when you need to like cash it in, where do you go, right? It's not easy. This stuff's a lot easier to use. The usability, the utility of it is really what makes it more valuable. And each of these coins have a different utility. So that's why Ethereum came up so high because of just, with NFTs and everything, like you need it to do all that. And that's the hot thing right now because everybody's, um, you know, seeing the kind of money the NFTs are making. Not everybody's making that, but like the possibilities there. So of course the markets, now that the market, everybody needs Ethereum, the Ethereum mark, you know, skyrocketed because the utility of Ethereum, if you're talking about gold and silver, if Bitcoin was gold, Ethereum would be silver because silver has more uses than gold, right? You use it in a lot more things and there's more, it can be used in more than just trading, right? So um, that's why that's kind of going crazy right now. Um, I don't know what's next, uh, but there's a few of them they're talking about that are going to get there. And actually the app that I'm creating is going to, we're working on a crypto that inside of it that will, you know, it will have a value. I, I don't want to go too deep into it because you know it's there's a lot there, but it's gonna it's gonna use something that already exists in the world and turn that into crypto, and also also help clean up the earth. So that is what I'm working on. But listen, guys, I got a boogie. I got a call in another minute, and um, yeah, just appreciate you guys. If you need anything, my Facebook profile's in there. Just reach out to me. I'll um, I'll help I'll help you as I can when I can. And if you guys need to talk to me for anything, um. I do consultations and things like that, but um, normally if it's like one or two questions, I can just handle it by messaging. So I'll is that it. where we would find out and talk to you about this crypto stuff is on uh, your Facebook? Yeah, you can reach out to me okay. to, that, to me about that too. Okay. okay. You. Anything you need, just like, that's why I put it there. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys. Um, that's it for me. Hopefully I see some of you guys next week and you'll get an email with the, um, the replay links in it sometime probably by by monday okay awesome appreciate it talk to you soon Bye. all right jason